the last video went over, so I wanted to go ahead and split this up and not rush like I always do uh, to get through the second half of it, which talks about drawing fonts and drawing text on the screen using SDL. Um, I'm quickly learning it's becoming a real pain to get these videos under 15 minutes a piece because programming is just so involved uh, that it's there's a lot to talk about. Um, nonetheless, uh, getting into drawing fonts, uh, as I showed you guys in the last lesson, we split the program up into header files, uh, main.h, main.c, status.h, and status.c, and I moved all the structs into main.h, also some of the bigger includes. Uh, we now include SDLTTF, a new API framework for drawing or loading and drawing fonts into SDL textures. So then uh, what I did was I included that. I added a TTF font reference to our game state main game struct, uh, which holds the font that we've loaded. A generic label texture, which we will set equal to whatever string we want to draw, since uh, for the sake of this tutorial, there will only be one label on the screen or being drawn at a time. Uh, that'll be a texture image. Um, then what I went ahead and did was I um, loaded the font which was a call inside load game to uh, game font equals TTF open font, crazy pixel TTF, which is our font file, 48 pixel size. And then um, I also added a call to TTF quit, or no, sorry, I added a call to TTF init to initialize the font system. And then I added a call to TTF quit to quit out when we're done. And then, of course, I unload the font that we loaded. Uh, at, this is when the game loop is quitting and the game's exiting. And I unload the font. And then, of course, if the label has been set, starts out as null. But if it has been set, we go ahead and uh, destroy the label and, and give the resources back here. I also added a couple game states, which um, the games can now be set into various states. And I will affect the processing and the drawing. Uh, of the game based off of which state it's in. And we start out in the live status screen state, which is like a Mario status screen, um, for the first two seconds of the game. So uh, I made sure that these nice functions inside our status.c get called at the appropriate times. So uh, inside init status lives, we're going to create our label. Uh, and I have some nice code here that I'm going to steal. Uh, that'll do it. So I'm going to draw the label in white. Um, I'm the label can be whatever we want to say here. I'm just going to set it to words for now. And um, I'm going to go ahead and create a texture from the surface. So SD, uh, TTF render text blended will actually render the text to an SDL surface. I'll create one too. Uh, so you create a temporary surface. Then we're going to set our game state label equal to the texture we create from the surface which is great. And then we're going to free the surface. We don't need it anymore and keep the texture around so we can draw it. So that should not fail, but it did. Oh yeah, that's right. I need the renderer and that's inside the game state. I'm just going to go ahead and call this game up here. And I'm going to fix I'm lazy and I don't like typing a lot of words, so inside of function prototypes and arguments, I'm going to rename game state to game. And good, build succeeded. So, okay, we've initialized the status menu, which is what I wanted to see. On shutdown, when we're leaving the status menu, you can guess what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy the I'm going to try to destroy the texture. For some reason, I can't. Uh, code completions annoying me. I'm going to destroy the texture to say I'm done with it. And it's important to note that I need to set this to null because I optionally free it when the game quits as well. So this will, that'll prevent me from doing that. Now that I have the stuff that I need to do initialized, we can actually draw it. So the status screen is going to be very similar to the main game screen in the sense I'm going to clear it to a background color. So this is the main game rendering screen, which is now only ran if the game states in status screen. So what I'm going to do instead of 
having a blue background. This one's going to be black to be kind of Mario-like. And I'm going to render the black. And then I'm going to render our font somewhere around the center of the screen. And I don't know if I need to set this to white, but it wouldn't hurt in case it wants to tint our drawing or texture. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the text. So I'm going to draw the text. I'm going to give it an XY position somewhere close to the center. Uh, my guess is that's going to be around 320 and 240 minus the width of the texture, which I don't think I have. Crap. Um, yeah. Let me check something real quick. Oh, that is really annoying. Let me just grab access to the renderer. what I thought. I wanted to see if I can access the width from the, uh, the texture as I try to draw this. Looks like I cannot do that. All right, I can access the width and height from an SDL surface, but I can't from a texture, which is kind of annoying me. So I'm just going to guess, because I don't feel like dealing with this right now. That should be enough. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the draw function for our texture, which is a label. succeeded. All right, I'm going to run this for the first time, and all right, there's our texture. I just realized something. Without the width and height being correct, it's going to stretch the image, so we have to keep track of what that was. And the easiest way for me to do that is to add it right under the label in our game state struct, label width, label height, and then save those what I should have done in the first place. Save those from our temporary surface when we create it. This will make things a lot easier on us. So now that we have these saved, I can use proper width and height values in here and not waste any more freaking time. Let's get a look at it. There we go, words on the screen, and then our game starts after a few seconds. It's exactly what I wanted to see. To make this more like a Mario status screen, uh, not just showing words, I'm going to show our man to the left of it, and then an X, and then the number of lives he has left. And the way I'm going to pull that off is I'm going to copy our code, which draws the man from our original do render method or function. Uh, some, when I say the word method, I mean function. They're, those words are used interchangeably a lot in, in programming, especially in object-oriented programming. So let me go ahead and find our draw to the man call. And I'm going to draw him right here. And the way I do that, it's nice to have all this stuff accessible. Easiest way that I can think to draw him is not to use his man XY position because that'll draw him where he would have been on the game screen, but to draw him very similarly to the same spot of the center of the screen. So let me just go ahead and see what this looks like. Here he is. He needs to be more to the left, so I'm just going to subtract 40 off of his position. A little bit more. Perfect. And then I'm going to bring the words down Oh, that's perfect. It can't get much better than that. 
and then uh, now as you can see words does not say X in the number of lives he has so the way we're gonna pull that off is when we generate the label actually I just realized something our man struct doesn't even have lives field it has life so I'm gonna change life to lives and then when we initialize him we're gonna give him three lives so game inside our init function lives is three and now we're going to use printf, but we're not going to printf to the screen. We're going to printf to a string. So first I'm going to declare the string, which is used by declaring a char array. And I know we don't need more than 128 characters, so that'll do. Start it out blank. And then we're going to sprintf, not printf. And by sprintf, the first argument is the string we're printfing to, and then the string that we are generating, just as if we were calling printf. And I think you can guess what's going to happen here. We're going to draw... Uh, Man dot lives and render that into our string. Uh, I actually forgot. Good. Percent U is for unsigned short or for signed short. I'm not really sure if this is the right one. Well, you know what? If all else fails, just cast it to int and put percent D. It always works too. So now that I've done that, I've got our string specially rendered that I can pass right in. And there's our Mario status screen, which actually looks quite cool. I was just thinking I was going to bring those words a little closer to him. Or him a little closer to those words, maybe. There we go. And I might add... How much time do I have left? Yep, no, I'm going to end the video here. So that's how you draw text on the screen and have a Mario-style status screen before your game starts. Thanks for watching, guys, and next time I will do something cool and talk about scrolling.